Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Lakshmi Singh. President Biden is ordering the release of one million barrels of oil a day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserves for the next six months. NPR's Asma Khalid reports it is an effort to rein in spiking gasoline prices in the United States. This is an unprecedented move that a senior administration official described as a wartime bridge. The White House has tried to frame high gas prices as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, dubbing the increase Putin's price hike. But persistently high gas prices are a political problem for Democrats ahead of the midterm elections. Republicans have seized on the issue and even begun holding events at gas stations in key battleground states. It's unclear how quickly the release will trickle down to gas stations. Twice in the last few months, the president has announced additional releases of oil, but he's been under political pressure to do more. Asma Khalid, NPR News, the White House. Russia is now demanding its foreign customers start paying for gas supplies in rubles or risk getting cut off. President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree that one of its biggest clients, Germany, is characterizing as blackmail. The German government has already activated an emergency energy plan that could lead to rationing of energy supplies in Europe's biggest economy. Russian shelling and missile strikes have caused heavy damage in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol. NPR's Becky Sullivan says new satellite imagery shows damage to a Red Cross facility in the city. The photos show direct hits to a warehouse marked with a huge red cross on its roof. The International Committee of the Red Cross said it did not have firsthand information about what happened. Other satellite photos show massive crowds lining up outside a grocery store. Officials say that hundreds of thousands have left since the shilling began, and many of them say they lived in their basements for weeks without access to food, running water, electricity, or heat. Russia agreed to a humanitarian corridor for civilians to escape to the Ukrainian-held city of Zaporizhia. Russian forces have continued to make steady but costly progress in Mariupol, according to the Institute for the Study of War, which says the city will likely fall within days. Becky Sullivan, NPR News, Kyiv. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says he will vote no on President Biden's Supreme Court nominee. Today, the lawmaker from South Carolina reiterated his concerns about Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson's record on sentencing child pornography cases. Graham says Judge Jackson's methodology was flawed. Though Graham is publicly opposing Jackson's nomination to the nation's highest court now, he supported her confirmation as an appeals court judge last year. Yesterday, Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine said she would vote to confirm Jackson. With that vote and the support of Democrats, Jackson's on track to becoming the first African-American woman and first former public defender to take on the lifetime position as an associate justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Stephen Breyer is retiring. The Dow is down 178 points at 35,051. You're listening to NPR News. Women are still lagging when it comes to representation in the music industry, according to a new examination of pop music across the decade. NPR's Andrew Limbong reports the new study finds that gender inequality is particularly severe among producers, songwriters, and other roles that are far less visible but still crucial in trying to generate lucrative chart-topping hits. Over the past 10 years, 57% of the top songs have had no female songwriters. The top female songwriter going up against the Drakes and Max Martins of the world is Nicki Minaj. The study comes out of USC Annenberg's Inclusion Initiative and was funded by Spotify. Researchers looked at 1,000 songs that made it to the Billboard Hot 100 year-end charts since 2012 and examined the artists, songwriters, and producers credited. It found that women made up less than a quarter of all the charting artists, a number that has stayed relatively stagnant for a decade. 12% of songwriters were women across the decade, and the number goes down to single digits when tallying producers. Andrew Limbong, NPR News. Growing political turmoil in Pakistan, NPR Sia Hadid says the prime minister is under mounting pressure from the opposition to resign. One of the parties that formed Imran Khan's governing coalition said it wouldn't support him, which means he's lost his slender majority. And it means Khan is likely to lose a no-confidence motion expected to be voted on next week in parliament. Khan's grip on power has appeared increasingly tenuous since analysts reported that military officials had withdrawn support for his rule. No Pakistani prime minister has ever served their full five-year term. That's NPR's Dia Hadid reporting. I'm Lakshmi Singh, NPR News. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations. Other contributors include DuckDuckGo, a privacy company committed to making privacy online simple. Used by tens of millions, they offer private search and tracker blocking with one download. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. 
Good afternoon. You're listening to Classical Music here on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. I'm your host for this afternoon, Matt Jackford. And I'm here with some very special guests as part of our call for performers. Today we have Autumn Equinox returning here to the studios to perform live with us without a net. We have Ryan Kurzak on Hurdy Gurdy, Dave Riggs on Double Bass, and Claire Sweeney on Nickel Harpa. Welcome to the show, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Great to have you all back here in the studios. And our first performance with you all went so well that we invited you back to perform for us again. And you all have some very interesting instruments, and we'll get into that later with the Hurdy Gurdy, the Nickel Harpa, and Double Bass. And, uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and dive into some music here. We have first a set of three pieces. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what they are, Ryan? Uh, Farewell to Glasgow, which is a waltz, Return from Fingal, and also the Monaghan Jig, Irish tune. So we've got this set coming to you right here from our studios, performed here by Autumn Equinox. Take it away, guys. Thank you. 
set there to start out here we had farewell to glasgow return from fingal and then monaghan jig and great transitions in between there you know it's almost seamless you know which song starts and which song ends um, so great work there that was autumn equinox performing here live in our studios so ryan tell me uh, about you know where are you all coming from and and y'all you know made the trip down today right we're coming from fairmont and morgantown okay you know, west virginia mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so who's from where well, I'm from Fairmont, and they're from Morgantown. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so up in the north central portion of the state, coming here yeah. um, today, right? Yep, exactly. At least there's some nice weather for you on yeah, your trip. Yeah, for sure. It's a nice uh, change of pace from what we've had uh, recently. So, um, tell us about you know how you all came together. You know where did you know why these instruments and how how did it all work out? Well, it's really weird. I played mandolin and guitar for many years in an Irish group, and um, I moved back to West Virginia, and I was looking for a cello player. And uh, I happened to jump on Craigslist, and I saw that there was a violinist. Craigslist, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't always get what you find on there. But... <laughs> no. Well, I was looking for a cello player, and then I saw another violinist who liked Irish music, also wanted a cello player. So I thought, hmm. So I contacted Claire, and uh, I said, I don't play cello, but I play the nickel harp, or I play the hurdy-gurdy, mm-hmm. and uh, that's, how we, that's how we met. But Dave and I went to high school together, so oh, we've okay. known each other for a while. Wow, cool. Yeah. And then you all just started playing um, these tunes, mostly, what, Irish? Irish tunes, mainly, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. very cool yeah. stuff. And heard you all perform live at Rock City just a couple weeks ago yeah. for St. Patty's Day. You were there? Oh, no. no. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I popped in for a second yeah. and, and checked it out. Um, but you all sounded great there. Thank it's, you. Um, you're a fun ensemble to be a part of, and you know, I hope you all find more and more gigs as you know this music is you know uh, great to listen to it's great for west virginia too you know with our irish heritage here yeah so, uh, and so i uh, appreciate that and let's uh let's keep digging through this playlist here we'll have more questions about these interesting instruments here coming up um but now we have another set of pieces here you want to set it up for us ryan yes i think we're playing a tr- uh, tune called um mother of my dreams which is a tune i wrote which you need to tell me the time signature when we get done what, what that is. Okay, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be checking it yeah. out. And then the follow-up is Trip to Pakistan, which is a, a, a tune that was often played in Irish sessions. Do you know who wrote it? Written by an Irish flute player. An Irish flute player wrote this tune. Okay, so, yeah. great. Okay, mm-hmm. so we have Mother of My Dreams, written by Ryan here, and then Trip to Pakistan, yes. um, written by an Irish flute, flute player. Mm-hmm. And we have Autumn Equinox playing in our studios live. So... Take it away. All right, thank you. Thank you. 
stuff. That was awesome. I love the the meter changes in there. Were Did you great. get it? I think um, so. There's a lot in four four. Um, so there, that does happen. But then there's these sections where I mean, if you're in four four. There's an extra beat every three bars, so it's something like thirteen four, you know. Yeah. Or if you're in three four, there's four bars, and the last one's in four four, something like that. Either way, it's thirteen four. We'll just say thirteen four. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for figuring that out for us. <laughs> yeah, you really tested my <laughs> oral theory knowledge there. I felt like I was back in theory four again, um, <laughs> trying to count beats there. But that was a good, that was a good test, and uh, appreciate yeah. it. Um, love, I always love interesting time um, signatures. You know. You you stick a beat here or you remove yeah. a beat there or, uh, you know, just keeps everything on their toe, everyone on their toes. So that was Mother of My Dreams written by Ryan here, Ryan Kurzak. And then we had Trip to Pakistan in that set there. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us about these interesting instruments. Um, we have the hurdy-gurdy here and tell us how it works. Well, the hurdy-gurdy is a wheel fiddle in that it's got the crank which moves the wheel and that wheel acts like a bow across the strings okay. so you put rosin on the um on the wheel and then you key the notes and these little tangents here act like your fingers on the fretboard of a fiddle right okay so the keys instead of pressing your actual fingers on the frets yeah you've got the keys i like that a lot better i think yeah yes me too <laughs> yeah well as um when i used to play mandolin the the violinist i used to play with used to say i played uh, an, an amateur instrument because okay. it was fretted. Oh, right. Sure, yeah. <laughs> that seems a little condescending. Yeah. You know, well, say. he was. He was. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but, hey, keyed instruments are great as a piano player here, yeah. so nothing wrong with playing the notes that you intend to play. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's right. Um, but uh, jokes aside, it's a really cool instrument, and um, you have to crank, it seems like you have to crank the instrument in the tempo of the song. Is that right? Yeah, most of the time, um, because it has this other bit that does the... that can keep tempo if you use it, called the trumpet. And um, you just do a little speed up, and it makes this bridge kind of smack up against the the, um, the the body of the instrument, and it gives that kind of buzzing sound. Yeah. So when you do that, yes, you have to be in time. Right. Otherwise, it probably still helps, but okay. you gotcha. don't have to. Yeah, the buzzing seems like it's like the percussion yeah, of, yeah. of the hurdy-gurdy. Cool. And, um, Claire, if you want to talk about the nickel harper, you can come to one of these mics, maybe that one or, um, or Ryan's mic. Sure. So yeah. The, uh, the nickel harper is a Swedish traditional instrument. It is, nickel harper means keyed fiddle in, okay. um, Swedish. So just like the hurdy gurdy, it has keys instead of just putting your finger right on the strings. And then it actually does use a bow that looks like a tiny little violin bow. It's like half the size of a regular size cool. violin bow. Kind of hold it across your chest, and so the bow has to be short so that you don't stab yourself in the eye. Right, right, and, gotcha. Um, so it has four strings that you play on, that, and three of those actually have keys for them. One is just like a low drone. Mm -hmm. And then it has 12 sympathetic strings that sit under the other strings, that are tuned to the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. And so any note that you play on the nickel harpa has a string that resonates along with Interesting. it and gives it like a natural reverb and that very, uh, very okay. ethereal sound. Yeah, do you keep it perfectly in tune or like slightly out of tune so it gives it a little more thickness? Try to keep it perfectly in tune. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of strings, so things can go Yeah, wrong. right, of course. <laughs> that's really interesting, Claire. That's the nickel harpa there. So you're basically bowing instead of cranking. Yep. Yeah, cool. So all the energy comes from the bow. Great. Yep. And then, uh, Dave, you're more than welcome to talk about the double bass if you like. Um, if you want to come up here and, 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 and introduce us a little bit. I think uh, most of us are probably familiar, but hey, why not? Let's yeah, hear, not, hear what uh, you have to not say. Not a stranger on the classical show, I'm sure. Though mm -hmm. I'm playing with a more of a folk pizzicato style here. And uh, uh, yeah, called the double bass, the upright bass. The name you used is one that I love, the string bass, which mm -hmm. harkens back to the day where... Your only other option for playing in that bass register was the tuba. Oh, so right. this was an alternative, the string bass. Right, right, true. And the string yeah. bass sometimes is used in partnership with the tuba, like in the workers' show or even in the wind ensemble. Too. That's right. So uh, that's great. So Dave Riggs here on the double bass. Okay, um, now that we've introduced ourselves to these uh, very interesting instruments here, um, we can return to another set. And then after this set, let's talk about that album that's coming out. So okay. yeah. um, our next set features two songs. If you want to set them up, Ryan. 
Yes, the uh, tunes are called Far Away Waltz and Crested Hens. And uh, Crested Hens, uh, I learned after I started playing the Hurdy Gurdy, is actually a, written by a Hurdy Gurdy player. Um, and I did not know that because it was a staple in the Irish session. So we play it more Irish than probably a Hurdy Gurdy player should play it. So yeah, okay. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Great, okay. <laughs> well, let's, take, uh, let's hear Autumn Equinox perform Far Away Waltz and Crested Hens live in our studios. Okay.
All right, we heard Faraway Waltz and Crested Hens there, performed here live in our studios by Autumn Equinox. And did I hear a diminished chord in there? Because it sounded <laughs> like it. <laughs> yes. Well, that's my theory knowledge again. Yes, very nice, very nice. Stepping away from you know, yeah. the traditional like pentatonic and stuff yeah. and getting into some more advanced harmonies there. <laughs> um, great, that was performed by Autumn Equinox here in our studios. And we're getting, I've been getting a lot of texts here about people who are really interested in, <laughs> and enjoying what they're hearing right yeah. now. And, uh, you know, um, it's uh, very unique what you all are doing with, with the different instruments here, um, something that you don't normally hear. And if somebody's listening out there and they want to book you for their wedding or some sort of event, how could they do that? AutumnEquinoxWV.com, <laughs> is that it? Yeah, okay. our website, AutumnEquinoxWV.com. Yep, AutumnEquinoxWV.com. Check them out. And, you know, there's a way you can email them or contact yes. them for booking. Uh-huh. So check that out. And... Um, What's awesome is that you all have just released a new album called Standing Stones. Yes. Just this past St. Patrick's Day. Tell us about that. Oh, well, I don't know where to start. I mean, yeah. you're the you're the musician. Where should I start? <laughs> at the <laughs> uh, at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we started recording it back in June, and uh, we tried to pick some tunes that really um, kind of complemented what the instruments could do. Um, there are numerous tunes that Claire wrote and that I wrote uh, that we put on there, and we just plugged away at it and finished up, I think in February, right? It was February. Yeah. And then we've got it up on Bandcamp now. So it's available digitally. Mm-hmm. We're still working out the, uh, the the CD distribution aspect of it. Yeah. Do you all know what you want to do? Do you want to do physical copies or vinyls? Yeah. Or well, we, we talked about doing vinyl, but we hear that that's way out like months yeah in and very expensive as well yes so we're going to we're going to focus on cds okay yep mm-hmm. i hear that yeah. and you know maybe some and a booklet or a package or something like that we are right and it is also already on spotify right spotify amazon music and, and youtube mm-hmm. so you can find it there great mm-hmm. great so that's standing stones the album by autumn equinox check it out and yeah it's a long process i'm sure how did you record it uh, we went to Zone 8 Studios in Morgantown uh, cool. with Mark Poole, and there was a lot of me going in and spending hours trying to record my parts right, and then mm-hmm. the rest of Dave and Claire would come in, and Claire would record her part in like Dude. under 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Some people are, are beasts about them, um, about recording, you know, are able to just sit down and yeah. um, and just crank it out, and some people, you know, needs... Um, you know, a few takes to, to get it down, and then either way is okay. So you all did it individually. We did a few tunes together live, mm-hmm. which was great because we learned how we actually used the last time we were here on the show when we were trying to figure out the beats per minute for certain songs. We would use what we did here last time as the beats per minute, and it was amazing how steady we actually were. So it was kind of fun to see that our time is not too bad. Yeah, okay. So that was on the click track <laughs> yeah. then? Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's always uh, interesting to go on there. You're like, well, is the click slow? Or right, something? yeah, it's speeding no. up, slowing yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the click that's wrong. Right? <laughs> um, great. Um, that's awesome. Um, looking forward to checking that out myself. Um, you can easily get it on Spotify or Amazon Music Standing Stones, released by Autumn Equinox. And let's go on to our next track here. And we have Innis Sui, right? Yes, that's correct. Tell us what that is. Um, I believe it's a place in Ireland, if I recall correctly. Um, like the Island of Joy, that's right. That's what it means. Gotcha. But uh, this was one of the first Irish tunes I ever heard that made me think, I wish I could play that. And come, you know, 20 years later, I can Okay, great. Well, here we are. Here we are um, in 2022, and we're about to listen to Autumn Equinox perform in his suite.
Miss Swee, performed here in our studios by Autumn Equinox. And they're performing for us live and got a little crank in there, too, <laughs> just for good measure. And um, if you're interested in watching, we are live on our YouTube channel right now. You can check out the link. It's posted on our WVPB Facebook page. And so you can check out the YouTube link there. And after it's over, you can always still check it out and watch the performance in, in, your, in its entirety or in fragments, however you want to watch it. That'll be on YouTube. And it's, again, posted on our – the link is posted on our Facebook page. So uh, you won't want to check out Autumn Equinox. And um, I know you guys have a couple of solo pieces. Are you all interested in doing those? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah. To to show off these instruments, these interesting instruments. So yeah. um if you're interested we could do the hurdy gurdy solo jasmine in the summertime if you okay. want, and then we'll do the nickel harpa solo after that. Yep, sounds good. If you good. are interested and if you want to just set it up real quick and then we'll, we'll take it away with Ryan here. So let me set it up by tuning real fast. Okay, that probably sure. will help. <laughs> that couldn't hurt. That will help it sound better. <laughs> yeah. That's always always important yeah. here. <laughs> Here we go. That's important part of the set. The yes. tuning is ever important. Glad everybody got to experience that. Yes. You know? <laughs> um, so here we have the Hurdy Gurdy solo, Jasmine in the Summertime, performed by Ryan Kurzak here in our studios. stuff yeah that was jasmine in the summertime here performed live by 
Ryan Kurzak in our studios on Hurdy Gurdy. It's interesting to hear the you know instrument by itself too, you know, and mm-hmm. hear um, all of the overtones by itself and the interesting you know sort of percussion cranking going on there. Right. And we have another solo here with Claire Sweeney, and we have her nickel harpa solo. And this is uh, probably going to be mispronounced here, um, but Polska after. Knocked their gall. I'm like, okay, I got it. Okay, all right. So, Claire, when you're ready, feel free to take it away. stuff there that was Polska after Nachtergall and you could really hear the sympathetic strings there I mean it just sounded like I put some reverb on it but really it was just all natural there that's really cool it just sounds like it's in a big hall that's so cool great stuff on the nickel harper there by Claire Sweeney in our studios and so we have about 10 minutes left um do you think you can get through all three of your last songs it's going to be close, or we could just do the lounge bar rolling wave set. What do y'all think? What would you prefer? Mm-hmm. Oh, we can do anything. All right. We can, we, can, we can try to get through it if you let us just power through. Okay. Just Let's do it. Together. Let's do it. All, All three. Right. Lounge bar, rolling waves, and a sheer. Take it away. Okay, I won't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go.
All right, with a little time to spare there, we heard Lounge Bar, Rolling Waves, and Inishir, all performed by Autumn Equinox live in our studios. And we got through the whole playlist and all the solo pieces as well. Um, thank you guys so much for coming in and yeah. playing with us. You can check out the new album, Standing Stones, that's on Bandcamp and streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And if you want to book them or just check more, check them out more, go to autumnequinoxwv.com. So we had Ryan Kurzak on Hurdy Gurdy, Claire Sweeney on Nickel Harpa, and Dave Riggs on bass. Thank you guys so much for coming in and talking with us. Yeah, good to see you again. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, it's always great to have you guys on here, and hopefully we can continue this relationship. <laughs> Stay tuned for 1A. That'll be coming up next right here on WVPB Charleston, WVBY Beckley, WVBL Bluefield, WVPW Buchanan, WVWV Huntington, WVP Martinsburg, WVKM Matewan, WVPM Morgantown, WVPG Parkersburg, WVDS Petersburg, WVWS Webster Springs, WVMP Wheeling. Support is provided by Mountain Health Arena in Huntington, presenting Justin Moore with Granger Smith May 6th. Tickets and information available at mountainhealtharena.com. This is West Virginia Public Broadcasting. President Biden's new budget is more than 100 pages long, but one thing that's missing? Student loan forgiveness. From WAMU and NPR in Washington, this is 1A.